My name is Matt Gallo. I'm the Terrestrial Invasive Species Coordinator for the Finger Lakes PRISM. Uh, PRISM is an acronym that stands for Partnership for Regional Invasive Species Management. We are a public private partnership between um, the Finger Lakes Institute at Hobart and Williams Colleges and the New York State DEC with the goal of kind of just stopping invasive species in any way we can. So we do this through prevention, education and outreach, um, management, all those kinds of ways that we could stop invasive species, um, we work to do so. HWA um, is the super teeny, teeny, teeny tiny insect. They're actually about at their full size, but the width of a human hair. You really can't see them at all, like out in the wild. These guys are tiny. And these little insects feed on um, our hemlock trees. We only have one hemlock tree species in our region, that's the eastern hemlock. And they are, um, by all metrics, ways you look at them, they are a keystone species. What hemlocks do for our ecosystems are incredibly unique and pretty much irreplaceable in our local forests. Hemlocks um, are a conifer, right? So they're a softwood species. They're related to you know, pine trees, spruce trees, fir trees, other kinds of trees like that. But hemlocks are a little bit different than all of those other trees. So those trees, like your pines and your spruces, they typically need full sun. Hemlocks are a little bit different. Hemlocks are incredibly shade tolerant, so you'll typically find them in more mature um, forest uh, over understories, and they actually cast the most amount of shade of any tree um, in New York State. These kind of characteristics enable hemlock trees to create these really unique environments. Um, often under hemlock canopies, it'll be a lot more moist, it'll be a lot um, colder, it'll be a lot darker. And these conditions really help a lot of important species for us, like our state fish, like the brook trout, our largest amphibian species, the hellbender, some really interesting fungi species, and just a lot of organisms really rely on these super duper unique conditions. Hemlocks also like to live on um, really steep slopes and on gorges. So when we think of the Finger Lakes, you know, places around like Watkins Glen, or Ithaca or on the shores of Canandaigua Lake, um, hemlocks are often the only trees growing in those really steep areas. So they're the only things that are preventing a lot of these hillsides from kind of collapsing down. So they have all of these different really important benefits and HWA is coming through and it is wiping our hemlocks out. With HWA, a big problem we have is that because these guys are super teeny tiny, they can spread very easily, right? A strong gust of winds can move these guys from, from one tree to the next, or in some cases, even one forest to the next. Um, and because they are a species that is capable of reproducing what we call parthenogenically, which means a, a female is able to reproduce on her own without a male, all you need is one of those little guys to spread from one forest to another, and she can basically take down a forest by herself. We have been able to do a pretty good job uh, monitoring um, how those populations are doing where they're currently really well established and trying to find new infestations. So climate plays a huge role in HWA. It actually used to be that um, upstate New York was too cold for HWA to survive. And when winter minimum temperatures get to about you know, like negative 25 to negative 30 degrees, that will kill off most, if not all, of the adultions in an area. And if you actually look at like maps of how HWA is spread over time, because on the east coast of the US, it was originally found in Virginia, so it kind of made its way north following the hemlocks range from there, you could see that around like the 80s and 90s, it would kind of hit like the New York, Pennsylvania border, and it didn't go any farther north. Like it, it kept going like up the coast, like into Connecticut, like Rhode Island and stuff where it is warmer there. Um, but it, it kind of hit like this invisible wall, like as it was moving northwards. And it wasn't until like the mid to late 2000s that it was finally able to start moving into upstate New York because, well, it's not cold enough anymore to wipe out a lot of the adulgence. Um, and so when we do see those um, instances where we'll have, you know, like a weekend like we had last year where it was like negative 30 degrees, that actually will wipe out a lot of the adults. And um, across a lot of the state parks, at least last year, they did see, in some cases, declines of the HWA population by as much as like 90 percent as a result of the few cold snaps that we did have last winter. So there are two ways that we could use to treat um, HWA. So our, our two methods that we have are um, pesticides and biocontrol. Usually if you're a, a private landowner, you know, you have some hemlocks, you know, in your woodlot or in your backyard or something, pesticides are what you're likely going to 
it's going to be your best option. So there are two kinds of pesticides that we use. That is dinotefrin and imidacloprid. So dinotefrin works, um, is kind of like the fast acting one. It's really useful if you have hemlock trees that are in dire, dire need of help and they need help like right now. Um, the problem is it doesn't last very long. So oftentimes dinotefrin will be combined with the other pesticide that we use, which is imidacloprid. Imidacloprid is a very long lasting pesticide. So it will last about like five to seven years, give or take on the conditions and the tree health and all those sorts of things. Uh, but it takes about a year for it to actually make its way through the tree and begin taking effect. Um, so oftentimes these pesticides might be used together um, or you might want to use only one or the other, just kind of depending on your situation. Both of these pesticides sort of work the same way. They're systemic pesticides. So they are um, being taken up through the xylem and the phloem of basically the, the tree's circulatory system. As hemlock willy adelgid is a sap feeder, they are basically end up drinking this pesticide. You know, if you're imagining like applying like a crop duster, you know, spraying like your hemlock forest, that's not what these pesticides are. They are really contained in terms of um, what they are affecting. It's usually only going to be HWA. Now, the problem is pesticides are really expensive. So what do we do at bigger landscape scales? That's where um, our biocontrols come in. Now, biocontrol is basically the idea of let's take a predator that is um, feeds on HWA in another region, and let's bring it over here, and hopefully it'll do that job for us. Now, there's a lot of concerns that, well, we're just taking uh, another species from another area, and we're bringing it over here. Is that also going to become an invasive species? Um, often with biocontrols, um, we do a lot of research to make sure that these species are only going to eat exactly what we are um, looking for. HWA is a really weird life cycle where they have two different generations in the year, one that will last over from like the summer going into most of the winter, and then a smaller generation that will go from like late winter into the early summer. So you need two different biocontrol species to feed on both of those different generations. One of them is a, a Laracobius beetle. These guys will feed on the generation over the winter. And then there's a fly species called Leucotaraxis that will feed on that kind of like spring generation. Right now, we have the New York State Hemlock Initiative at Cornell has been researching these biocontrols for well over a decade at this point. And we are at the stage where they are actively being released across uh, New York State um, because we have a lot of hemlocks in the Finger Lakes. They have been releasing a lot of these guys throughout the Finger Lakes region onto a lot of state parks and, and sort of just public lands in general. By all accounts, they are working. Their populations are growing, but slowly. But the good news is, is that once these populations really start building, that they will be able to hopefully control HWA um, in the Finger Lakes and beyond for the long run. You know, as depressing as HWA can be, we do have tools in our toolbox, our biocontrols, our pesticides that can save our hemlocks as long as we get to them before HWA kills them. If you want to help, we do have a volunteer program where we train you how to identify hemlocks, identify HWA, and help us survey and monitor it. And if you are concerned about HWA, if you are concerned about your hemlocks, this is by far the number one best thing you can do. Because if you can find a new population of HWA uh, you know, years before or right as HWA is infesting it, that will save us so much time and is likely going to save those hemlock trees for the future. We are currently accepting volunteers on a rolling basis, and we do have different workshops, um, hands-on workshops across the Finger Lakes this year, uh, where you come out in the field with us and we could look for HWA together. So if I had like a day off and I could just do like whatever I want, um, I recently did this with my friends uh, this past spring. Uh, we went backpacking on the Onondaga Trail. Um, it's kind of like the border between uh, Syracuse, or I'm sorry, Onondaga County and Cortland County. And it's a branch of the Finger Lakes Trail. That is like one of the coolest hikes I have ever been on. You feel like you're just like in the middle of nowhere. Like you're so far away from like civilization and it is easily the most biodiverse ecosystem in upstate New York I have like ever hiked through. You ever want to see like what a real healthy like old growth like forest should look like.
you should go there. It's awesome, awesome hike. 